The Roman poet Horace once urged a friend of his to seize the day, carpe diem. In antiquity, there was a school of thought that felt that the worries of the future make us less happy in the present. And in fact, Horace tells his friend to trust as little as possible in tomorrow. Quam minimum credula postero. When you do in Latin, be like Horace and enjoy the present. That is, conjugating a verb in the present tense. This, in fact, is probably one of the easier tenses in Latin to learn. The present tense shows an action that, wait for it, shows an action happening in the present time. So it's something like, I love, or I am loving, or even, I do love. All of those English forms are represented by one simple word in Latin, in the present tense. We're going to start with the first conjugation verb for loving, amo amara. Remember, it's customary to give at least the present infinitive of the verb because that's how we identify the group the verb belongs to. Since amara ends in an A-R-E, it must be first conjugation. Latin and many other languages recognize words that are either singular, just one person or thing, or plural, where the subject is more than one person or thing. And the Latin verb is divided up into three different persons as well. These are the three different subjects that verbs can have. We call these subjects first person, second person, and third person. The first person is the I and we form. You can think of this as the closest person to the speaker. The second person is the you and you all forms. This would be the second most important person to the speaker, the person you're talking to. The third person is the he, she, it, and they form, and is often used to identify something other than the speaker or the person being spoken to you know, like names or objects, or just a he or she. All verbs have a present stem, and it usually is the infinitive, the second principal part, without the RE. So for amo amara, the present stem is ama. With that in mind, we now can conjugate. The steps for conjugating all regular verbs in Latin are simple, with just one exception. First, we're going to bring down the first principal part. This is always going to be the I form of the present tense. And since it's always going to be given to us, we'll use it. Then we take our present stem, the infinitive without the RE, and add the endings S, T, mus, tis, unt to the verb. So the present tense conjugation of amo is amo, amas, amat, amamos, amatis, amant. Notice how each ending is different for each of the different forms of the verb. This is very handy since we can read the verb amas and automatically know that it's you love. Because of this, Latin doesn't always use subjects for its verb. What I mean is, instead of writing ego amo, the Roman would simply say amo, since the O ending carries with it the sense of I. So learn your endings for the present tense, ost, mustis, unt, and be able to match them up with a proper subject, and you'll go far in Latin. There are three more conjugations, though. The second conjugation, which consists of verbs whose infinitives end in a long e, r, e, goes just like the first. We'll bring down our first principal part, moneo, then take the present stem, the second principal part without the re, mone, and add our endings to the end of it, st, mus, tis, unt. And we have our full conjugation. The third conjugation is a bit different. Third conjugation verbs, remember, have second principal parts that end in a short ere. The present stem is similar, but the fact that it ends in a short e means this vowel will change as it goes through the conjugation. Long vowels are much harder to change because of their length, but this short vowel will go through some mutations in our present conjugation, so check it out. We will bring down our first principal part, traho, then our present stem, traha, but this short e changes to an i for most of the forms of the verb. Trahis, trahit, trahimus, trahitis. And finally, for the last, third person plural, they form, we have a u, trahunt. Fourth conjugation verbs, with the second principal part ending in a long ire, are a bit easier, but still similar to the third conjugation. So, we take our first principal part and bring that down, audio. Then we take our present stem, audi, and add our personal endings to this, audis, audit, audimus, auditus. The third person plural is a bit different, and we have to add a u, audiunt, and you'll notice that it's similar to the third conjugation form, trahunt. That's our present tense in all conjugations. The key steps to keep in mind when conjugating are identify the present stem, which is the second principal part, the present infinitive, without the RE. 
bring the first principal part down. This is the first person singular, the I form of the verb in the present tense. It's already given to us, so use it. Then add the personal endings to the end of the present stem. Once you've done this, your verb should have the endings O, S, T, MUS, TIS, UNT. But take note of the different vowel in the third conjugation. The short E changes to an I in most of the forms. And then also, the third and fourth conjugations end in the third person plural in a U, N, T. Learn these rules well and you'll be able to conjugate almost any verb in Latin. And most verbs follow these rules, so we don't have much need to memorize long lists of irregular verbs.